uh, at the 6 a.m. worship, we spoke to you about the resurrection. At 9 o'clock, we spoke about uh, Paul preached the resurrection. Now I want to talk to you about after the resurrection. After the resurrection. It is certainly true that in John chapter 19 and verse 30, Jesus said, it is finished. He was hanging upon the cross, and this was one of the seven last sayings of our Lord. So he really did not need to stay around after the resurrection to complete the plan of salvation. The plan of salvation was completed as Jesus hung upon the cross and of course he was able to take a panoramic glance and a retrospective view of all of the prophecies that had been written concerning him. Prophecies concerning his birth, prophecies concerning even where uh, he would operate as far as the headquarters of his ministry. Prophecy had determined that he would be born in Bethlehem of Judea. Prophecy had determined that he would have to go down into Egypt, that it might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt have I called my son. But also Isaiah wrote something concerning uh, the land of uh, Zebulun and Naphtali, and that would be the way of the coast. And this would be where his headquarters would be established. So Jesus established his headquarters in Capernaum that was in the area that Isaiah had talked about. Everything that he did during his uh, time here upon this earth, he was always conscious of what the prophets had said about him. So consequently, as he is hanging upon the cross and all of the prophecies had been fulfilled, Isaiah had determined that a highway shall be there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness. And the word way, a highway, is a connecting link. So as he hung between the heavens and the earth, one hand symbolically stretched forth God, toward God, and the other hand symbolically stretched toward man. He declares that I am the way, I am the connecting link. And when Isaiah said the highway would be there, every part of it had been put in place except for the connecting link. And now I am here, I am the way. So Isaiah's highway is complete. Everything that has been spoken of me is complete. Except there's one passage that said I would be given vinegar to drink. So when he saw that had not been fulfilled, he said, I thirst. And they gave him a sponge filled with vinegar. And after taking the sponge filled with vinegar, he recognized every prophecy now has been accomplished. And thus he said, it is finished. All of the prophecies. But he stayed around here after he got up out of the grave in order that many questions would not be hanging around. They had said that when Jesus arose from the grave and the soldiers that were eyewitnesses of the resurrection, eyewitnesses of the angel that came and rolled back the stone, and when the soldiers went back to report to their superiors, they said, don't tell this, don't let anybody hear this, but we'll give you some money to tell a lie. Say that he did not arise, but you fellas went to sleep. Now, we know that there's a penalty for going to sleep on the job, but uh, you can tell that lie and we'll cover for you, and we'll make sure that no harm comes to you. So they went on and tried to tell people that his disciples had stolen him away. But Jesus decided, I'm going to stay here for about 40 days and appear to different ones here and there so they'll know that my body was not stolen, but that in reality, I really did arise. Now, he appeared to his disciples on miscellaneous occasions. It was really about 11 times all total that he appeared. There are five or six that are outstanding. He appeared to Mary Magdalene in John 20 and 15, and she thought he was the gardener. 
He appeared to the ten disciples. I say ten because Judas has already hung himself. And in this particular setting, Thomas, who is called Didymus, was not present. So in John 20, verses 19 through 24, he appeared in that upper room to 10 disciples. Eight days later, in John 20 and 26, he appeared to the 11, because on this occasion, Thomas was present. Then he appeared to two disciples on the Emmaus Road, Luke 24, verse 13. He appeared to the disciples on the bank of the sea, where they had returned going back fishing. And that was in the 21st chapter of John. Matthew 28 and Mark 16 records the Great Commission where he appeared to his disciples and told them to go into all the world. And one of them said he commanded them to teach all nations. And another he said, preach the gospel to every creature. But it is both giving an account of the same appearance. Finally, here that we have just read in the first chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. Here, it does not tell us the exact meeting, but being assembled together with them. He commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Now that is significant in that 11 of the men whom Jesus chose were Galileans. Judas was the only Judean. The other 11 were Galileans. Judas was the only one who was a Judean. And Jerusalem was uh, located in Judea. Now remember Palestine, that the towns and cities in that province called Galilee, it lay to the northern part of Palestine. And then uh, between Galilee and Judea was Samaria. And down at the south was Judea. So Jesus, well, I hope I'm not going too fast for you all. Jesus knew that these men were really Galileans. Well, why were they in Judea, in Jerusalem of Judea? Because God had already determined three times a year all of the males in Israel had to appear before the Lord in the holy city of Jerusalem.